micro. Not so much the specifications of the machine or even the machine itself. Um, what we're going to do is look at something that makes the BBC useful in today's world because part of this program or this series is um, about classic to modern from retro to modern which means uh, we're trying to keep these machines going and bring them into a modern age so what we're going to do is look at a piece of hardware that allows the BBC Micro to have fast access to its programs, to its games, to whatever software you want to use on the machine and allow something that's a bit more convenient than either cassettes or discs. And it's something that's kind of needed for most micros now because, um, you know, waiting for tapes or waiting for volatile media which may or may not install or load or run is something that we don't really need anymore because what we want to do is we want to preserve the software as well and we want to make sure that the software that we have will run so we can use the machines because it's now a lot easier to preserve the physical machines than it is to preserve the data that's on volatile old floppy disks and cassettes. So let's have a quick look at the alternative for the BBC Micro and we'll also have a look at what it was up against and how you know this system is probably better but also it's um, something I'd like to um, kind of endorse for this machine and we'll cover that in a little a little later okay so back in the 1980s, if you were lucky enough, you would have had one of these. And it was a disk drive, or a disk drive of sorts. And, um, you know, as you can see, they're quite big. And um, they are substantially bigger than the BBC's baby brother, the Electron. Okay, so, and they are very, very heavy and also very cumbersome as well. Um, but you had to be seriously well off to be able to afford a disc system for the BBC Micro because it cost a lot more than its baby brother the Acorn Electron. In fact in some cases you could buy two Acorn Electrons for the cost of one floppy disk system on a BBC Micro. One of the biggest reasons they were called floppy disks is because they were in fact flexible and floppy which is you know the reason why they got the name to be honest and then the machines themselves or rather the floppy drives themselves didn't actually store that much data and it all depends which system you got if you got a 40 track or an 80 track system double sided double headed it all depends on the drive you went for and um, so the more expensive to drive the more data you were able to store on these discs but you know it was quite volatile and um, you had to look after these discs because if you left them near a magnet they could be wiped um, if you bent one of them too much they wouldn't they wouldn't work and you know really they were they weren't the most robust system in the world, but they were quick and they were a lot quicker than cassette tape. That was the other alternative for these machines. Remember, there weren't really any hard drives around at that point, not for these machines anyway. OK, so for those of you who don't realise, the BBC Micro is quite a substantial machine. 
And if you have a look at the size of it against my hand, it's not a small thing by any means, but look at the size of that floppy drive sat on top of it. I mean, it takes up so much of the space on the machine, which is where, you know, you could sit a small monitor on the top. It was um, quite a lot of space at the back of the machine, and this floppy drive uses over two-thirds of that space to sit on top of the machine. And it is almost as heavy as the BBC Micro itself. And the BBC Micro isn't a lightweight machine by any any imagination either. So as you can see, a floppy drive system was not something that most people who had a BBC Micro at the home really could afford. And um, it wasn't particularly an elegant system for any system, you know, whether it was a BBC or an Apple II or a Commodore machine, etc. Because they were always quite big and clunky. But that's the technology we had in the day. So this was your real and your only choice that you had if you wanted fast access to data and fast loading of programs. Okay, so now if I turn the BBC on its side, I'm going to show you what replaces that huge and giant floppy disk system. And it's this tiny, tiny card. And as you can see here, it's not very big at all. And it plugs into the user port on the underside of a BBC Micro. And it's a tiny little card when you compare it to the size of that disk drive system. But also the um, the card has its own access to a, a small SD card or a micro SD card, which you can see here just in the slot. And it's a little SPI MMC system. And it's something we're going to have a quick look at because this system, even with a little 2 gig card that's in there, can just about store everything that you could ever use, need or want to use on a, a BBC Micro. So we're going to try this machine out. So we're going to power it. BBC on. And as you can see, you'll see Smart SPI on the screen. And um, that's the only real difference that um, kind of points to something slightly out of the ordinary on this machine. Now, this kit comes in two parts. It comes in the, the small credit card sized device that we've just seen, the, the actual unit itself with the um, SD card in it. Um, but it also comes with a small EEPROM as well, which you plug into the ROM socket on a BBC. Now, if you have another disk filing system in there, the, the downside is that this Smart SPI with its um, disk, with its own version of a disk filing system actually takes precedent. So generally your floppy disk system isn't going to work with this in because this takes precedent over that okay and it works very much in the same as your standard floppy disk system but this has got um, ADFS and your SPI smart SPI ROMs in here but this smart SPI is actually taking precedent over the um, the Acorns disk filing system okay so if I do a normal catalog and you can see it kind of looks like a standard disk drive system you know you've got your boot options your tree options your, your menu options all the stuff that you would actually see if you were using this system on a floppy disk system now there's nothing much out of the ordinary with this and you can save 
files and folders to it as well. So I just did a little test program and saved it. Okay, so if I uh, There you go, there's that little quick program just to show you that you can use this as a normal floppy disk system if you wanted to use it that way, which is brilliant. So, you know, if I do... Uh, let's have a look. Um... list okay so I've added to the the little program and if I go um, save and there we go um, so if, here's your program and if I do it again you still got save there and if I now reload the software in and list it there we go. It comes up with the additions you've already done to it. So it um, works just the same as a, a normal floppy disk system. And it's quick, as you can tell. It's very, very quick. Now, you can save all of your programs on it in the way you'd want to normally save them. Um, you can, you know, you can transfer software that you've already written to this from your old floppy drives. Um, but one of the nicer things is this, this has come with a package already installed in this in two directories. Um, so we've got games directories and you can list them as you would normally list a normal floppy drive. But if I do shift and break on this, we get the retro clinic list and Basically, this is a list of the software that's already installed on this SD card. So if you scroll down, you can see you have lots and lots of different programs and games already installed on this small 2 gig card. Or you can skip through the pages. As you can see the page count flick up at the top. Okay. If you want to just go back to normal, you just hit hit the break key and then you're back to using it as a normal floppy disk system and it's very good and it's very quick and by using modern hardware in a classic machine you're actually extending the life of the machine itself and its usefulness which is brilliant now this um, piece of equipment is um, basically this emulated floppy drive system is actually made by a company or and distributed by a company called Retro Clinic and um, when I ordered this from them it was very quick I mean it literally turned up within a couple of days at the most and I um, was quite impressed with that and also it comes with quite um, a nice instruction leaflet as well which is very useful and it's very very well presented and put together and you know I would recommend really anybody who has a BBC Micro and who would wants a bit more of a modern access to software and probably a more reliable way of storing their own software on a on the system itself to you know get one of these you don't have to have it with a, an SD card full of software on, you know, the shift break menu. But um, you can buy it as just a, a plain system and you then add in your own SD card as well. And you can start from scratch and do what you need to it, which is brilliant. So I really can't recommend um, getting one of these for a BBC Micro more because it is very useful. And even if you do want to go for the list of games that they put on these cards just so you can kind of get you started they um 
the games themselves, I've just I haven't had time to go. There's there's hundreds on here, and I haven't had time to go through a lot of them. But you know, if you flick through them, you'll find that most of the the games that you may have in your collection, for whatever reason, um, probably are already on here, which is not a bad thing. So one of my reasons for um, you know obtaining a BBC Micro in the first place is because it comes it um, it was able to play one of my favourite games at the time when I was um, you know when these were out and I had an Electron because basically the BBC Micros was outside of a lot of people's kind of pockets really for as a home machine. And the Electron was the only other BBC compatible micro that was out there, or almost BBC compatible micros, especially in terms of its basic. And so I'm just going to put on one of the quick games and show you how quickly this thing loads, you know, in comparison to floppy disks. Okay, so if I go down to Firetrack. And there we go. It's just about instant. Okay, so you can see the game loads up almost instantly. And, you know, it actually shows off the um, the capability of the BBC, especially with its musical capability. And then to just get out of it is just shift and break and then you're back to the normal list of software that comes with this um, system if you want to use something else or if you just want to go back and do something normal like load and save your programs you're back up to your normal floppy disk emulation So this system itself is just about faultless. So I haven't really found anything to uh, either complain about or to moan about on this system or even any glitches in the way it works. It is almost seamless with the BBC Micro itself. Now, to make this um, new emulated disk drive work properly, um, the best way is to run some of the older software, transfer it onto here, such as your, you know, your database, your spreadsheet, your word processor, etc. Anything you want to run on this BBC Micro, put it onto the SD card. Um, because then you have a system that's eminently usable. But if you're going to do that, then you're going to have to either have a an RGB monitor, um, such as the Microvitec Cub, or something similar to that to make use of um, the software properly because you remember the BBC had different modes and uh, your standard mode which was here mode one um, is something that you would use with a, a CRT but as you go up the modes if you go to mode three which is what a lot of your spreadsheets in your databases or your more sort of technical orientated program other than games would be using and it would be looking for that RGB signal um, RGB output rather and um, at least 80 columns of text now um, a TV a CRT TV wouldn't display that but an RGB to SCART lead on the this system allows it to basically be as clear as and as good as 
a microvitec monitor and also you don't get the the scan the scan lines on the system especially if you're doing some recording etc um so as you can see it's nice and clear on this system and then all the all of the other modes actually work as well And there we go and it is very very clear so if I zoom in a little bit on here the camera to focus okay that's something you wouldn't get on a standard CRT TV so as you can see two small modifications on this machine make a massive difference and one of them is just a cable and the other one's the SD card and um, it makes the machine a better usable and more usable prospect going forward which is great because this is what we need to do to keep these machines alive and to keep them useful going forward in the 21st century right okay that was a quite a quick look at the retro clinic um, floppy drive emulator and it, it's almost like a hard drive it, it basically is a, a hard drive on a BBC micro using the user port and um, you know I can't recommend it enough um, or something similar because there's a couple of different versions of um, the floppy drive emulator out there for the BBC Micro and uh, it turns a good computer into a more accessible computer so it actually enhances the machine itself and also with the addition of a RGB to SCART lead on a modern LR, um, sorry on a modern flat screen TV um, makes a lot of difference with the usability of the machine allowing you to have very clear access and very clear display to things that you wouldn't normally be able to sort of see very well if at all on a CRT TV you'd have to get a microvitec monitor or a very good RGB monitor to match what an LCD TV or a modern ish LCD TV can put out which is great because these machines then have a, a place going forward because you know SCART is commonly used especially in the UK and um, and it's quite accessible and easy to get hold of a small TV to make it work. So I hope you had um, an enjoyable look at um, what you can do with the BBC Micro to enhance it. And um, I hope that um, you'll you know, come along this channel again and come along for the ride with us because I'm going to cover the BBC Micro in, in more detail uh, on the next episode and why I think that the BBC Micro was possibly the machine of the 1980s and um, that it kind of, well it did, its technical abilities kind of overruled nearly every other microcomputer that was out there. Not saying that it was the most popular micro because it wasn't you know there were other machines that outsold it by a massive margin but the technical abilities of this micro were head and shoulders above the rest and above the competition and hopefully um, my next video will will actually show that okay so thank you for watching thank you for listening and I hope um, you enjoyed this and I hope if you 
liked it enough to subscribe and we'll keep you up to date and moving forward to making more content about how to improve and how to keep these machines alive in the 21st century okay thank you for watching